Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam. I'm a licensed cosmetologist and professional hairstylist. And in today's video, I want to talk about setting boundaries and the importance of having a healthy work-life balance. I am going to be talking about this a little bit more specifically from the perspective of a hairstylist and, you know, someone working in the beauty industry, working with the public, doing services. But this really can apply to anyone, no matter what field you work in. It even can apply to just your personal life. Boundaries are extremely important. So hopefully this will be relatable for you, you know, no matter what field you work in, but specifically if you are also a cosmetologist. But before we get into it, we do have a sponsor for today's video. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this portion of the video. If you're unfamiliar with Skillshare, they are an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They offer creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. They have classes on a variety of different topics ranging from crafts, productivity, marketing, social media, videography, a wide range of things. A class that I started watching recently that I've been finding really helpful is DIY logo design for your small business or nonprofit by Anna Galindo. I've actually been in the process of working on a fun new project and I've been needing to make a new logo but was kind of struggling with ideas. So this class has been really helpful. An annual subscription is normally less than $10 a month, but the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a two month premium a membership for free. I've been working with Skillshare for a while now. They're an awesome company. I love their platform and yeah, thank you so much to them again for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for giving me the opportunity to work with sponsors. So boundaries. This is something that I feel like I talk about on my channel a lot in my vlogs, in my story time videos. If you're familiar with my videos, you know my story times. I always love to share different like bad experiences I have with clients and then share the lesson that I learned from the situation. And a lot of the times the issue comes down to not having strict boundaries established. This can be in the form of, you know, maybe clients not respecting you, not respecting your prices, asking you to do services that are not on your service menu, asking you to come in early, to stay late, to come in on your day off. Maybe they are texting your personal number outside of business hours. Maybe they're just not respecting your time and just showing up late to their appointments or not showing up at all, canceling last minute. So I wrote down a list of a few things that you should keep in mind and start implementing to establish boundaries at work with your clients. These are some things that I need to remind myself, things that I do now that are helping, and also some things that I definitely could work on because I'm definitely not perfect with this by any means. I mean, if you're subscribed to me, you probably know this because I still talk about these things regularly. So the first thing that I have is have consequences for bad behavior. So a cancellation policy, for example, a fee for clients who are late. And you can do that however works for you and your business and whatever you feel comfortable with, whether you wanna require that people put down a deposit before booking an appointment, or if you you know wanna charge them a fee, and whether you wanna make it within 24 hours or 48 hours, but you need to have some kind of policy. Because if every time somebody is late to an appointment, just doesn't show up, cancels last minute, does anything that is interrupting the flow of your schedule and is interfering with the money that you're taking home at the end of the day, there needs to be a consequence for that because otherwise all that's going to happen is you're going to keep getting the short end of the stick and you're going to end up losing money. And at the end of the day, this is a career. This is how we make our living. This isn't just something we're doing for fun as a hobby. So you need to take it seriously. And by having consequences for those bad behaviors, it's going to not only hopefully lessen the chance that people are going to do those things, but at least then when they do, there will be some kind of consequence for it and something that will at least make you feel a little bit less frustrated and drained at the end of the day. I think a lot of people don't realize when they book an appointment 
with a hairstylist and especially if it's a long appointment like if they have four plus hours blocked out of someone's schedule and then they just decide to not show up they don't realize that time is money and that big appointment slot that was blocked out specifically for them is now lost and that was money that we now lost out on and we came into work essentially for nothing so the first salon that i ever worked at right out of beauty school was an hour away from where i lived and i remember i had somebody booked on my schedule for a color correction so that is a very long appointment so i had pretty much my whole day blocked out for this one girl so i show up to work an hour away and it's the time of her appointment and she's not there so I wait, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, she's still not showing up. So I call her and she answered. And as soon as I say who it is that's calling, she hangs up on me. So then when I call back, she just sends me straight to voicemail and just denies the call. So I drove an hour, wasted two hours out of my day, because now I have to drive an hour back, the gas money that it took to get there and back. And now I am out all this money and I had a whole day that was reserved specifically for this girl for her color correction. You know, maybe something came up, uh, maybe she just changed her mind, maybe she didn't have the money for it, and that's fine, but you could call and let the salon know, let the stylist know. I don't think that it occurred to her, like she just didn't even think about how it would affect the stylist and you know what the outcome would be then. And I think a lot of clients, they, they don't think about that kind of stuff. And maybe not even necessarily out of selfishness, but if you've never worked in a position like that before, you just don't even realize how it affects the other person. So it's very important to have these policies because otherwise it's gonna just keep happening. And I can tell you from personal experience, all that's gonna end up doing is making you feel really bitter and resentful and burnt out and just make you kind of hate your job and hate people. The next one is know your worth and stick by it. And that goes for your prices, the services that you do, the hours and days that you work, your policies, etc. And don't allow yourself to get guilt tripped by people. If you set a particular price for a service, that's how much that service costs. Just because somebody comes in and they guilt trip you and maybe they can't afford it, okay, well, we can figure out a way to work within your budget and maybe give you something a little bit different that is within your price range. But I'm sorry, if you wanna be full on platinum blonde, but you have a budget of $60, that's just not happening. Point blank period. I'm not gonna do a 300 plus dollar service on you for $60 just because that's all you happen to have and that's all you can afford. You're not gonna see me walking into the BMW dealership and being like, oh, I really, really want this car, but oh, I just can't afford it. Mm, you think you could just give it to me for like $10,000 instead? No, like it doesn't work that way. If somebody can't afford a particular service, then they can't afford that service. And listen, I totally understand being on a budget and just wanting to treat yourself and get your hair done and not being able to afford it. And I get that, especially nowadays, color services are very expensive. But at the same time, the prices are what they are for a reason. It costs money to have a salon and to even like have a business open in the first place. The insurance, the business licenses, the bills just to keep the building up and running for the electric, the water, all of the products. The products to actually do color services are expensive. Not to mention the stylist education and their training. Especially if you are going to someone for color, all of those like nice, modern, beautiful color applications that you're seeing, that's not stuff that they're teaching people in cosmetology school. We have to go and pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go and take additional classes to learn those things and to keep up with our education. And aside from even the money, it's just the time and the dedication that goes into practicing and perfecting these skills. So you need to set your prices based on what you feel your work is worth and then you need to stand by that because there's a reason you charge what you charge. And if a client doesn't respect that and doesn't understand that, that's not a client that you want anyway. I actually took a screenshot of this photo that I saw on Instagram. It's a quote, it says, people who get upset when you set boundaries are the ones who benefited from you having none. 
And I just thought that that was so perfect and so relevant because it's true. My next tip, which goes along with what I've just been saying is to have open communication and be upfront from the start. Once you let somebody get away with something once, it's a lot harder and more awkward, honestly, to put your foot down later on. Because at that point, they already have been getting away with things and they're gonna feel like, oh, well, why can't you keep doing this for me? Prime example, and this was another story time that I had posted a while back, I had this lady that I was doing eyelash extensions on and she was late a handful of times, called to reschedule last minute, um, ended up wasting a lot of my time. Like after I was done with her appointment, she would like stay and linger and then make me run late for my next client. And I felt really bad for her because she was giving me a whole story about all of these like medical conditions she had and disabilities and whatnot. And so I felt bad. And so I was trying to be extra nice and I let her get away with a lot of things in the beginning. And then it got to a point where I was like, okay, she can't keep doing this. Cause you think the first time around, oh, it's just this one time, I'll let it slide, it's no big deal. And you wanna be human, you know, you don't wanna be this like cold robot. You wanna be understanding and you wanna, you know, help people out. But the thing is, usually if you let something slide, especially in the very beginning when it's like a new client, someone you don't really know that well, you let it slide one time and it's just gonna keep happening and they're just gonna keep expecting that. From personal experience, I just find that it's a lot easier and especially if you are someone that isn't good with confrontation and you just feel very awkward and uncomfortable with that kind of stuff, making things known up front before it becomes an issue makes the whole thing a lot easier rather than confronting them with this information after the fact. Does that make sense? It also just makes it better for the clients too because then at least that way they have all the information from the beginning. They know what your policies are. My next piece of advice is if you are doing something extra for somebody or making an exception, let it be known. Don't just do it and not tell them because they're not going to know then that it was something extra or that you did them a favor. They're going to just think that's the norm and they're going to expect it every single time. If you don't say anything and you're doing the haircut for free or you're giving them a discount, they're going to just think that's what the price is. And so if they come in next time, it's going to be awkward. You either are going to feel like you have to do that free service again or give them that discount again. Or if you don't and the price is higher, they're gonna be confused and be like, well, what the hell, why is the price different? That's also going to make the situation better too because then they will be hopefully a little bit more appreciative knowing that you were doing something extra for them and you were going above and beyond. Now, some boundaries to set outside of the workplace and these are what's really gonna help with that work-life balance. Don't give clients your personal phone number. And I understand that some people, you know, with booking, they have to because they don't have an online booking system or if you're like doing your own thing, you're freelancing, whatnot. And if that's what you prefer and that's what works for you is having clients reach out to you through your personal number, then that's fine and keep doing that. But I know for me personally and for the other stylists I work with and other stylist friends that I have, it can be very overwhelming because it's hard to establish boundaries because clients will reach out to you during any freaking hour of the day and night. And if you're laying in bed trying to go to sleep at 10 p.m. and your phone is dinging and it's a client texting you about booking an appointment, or if you're like out to dinner with your significant other and your phone's blowing up from a client, it's like, it's, it makes it hard to keep your work life separate from your personal life. To go along with that, I put down, don't respond to text, emails, DMs, calls, etc. outside of work hours. And again, unless that works for you and you don't mind doing that, that's fine. But if it bothers you when a client reaches out at 10 p.m. while you're laying in bed trying to go to sleep, then don't respond to them during those hours. My boss said that she actually had a client text her recently and she had texted her like late at night and my boss has kids, she has a family. So this client texted her about wanting to book an appointment and she just didn't even open it because she's home with her family, it's nighttime. And so the client like double texted her 
and then was just sending like a bunch of question marks because she wasn't responding to her right away. Who the f do you think you are? Are you kidding me? It's absolutely disrespectful and it's completely overstepping boundaries. So if you don't want clients texting you during certain hours, don't respond to them. So that's everything that I jotted down. I know that there's definitely gonna be people that disagree with me on some of these things because I know that there are a lot of people who fully believe that you should just give everyone the benefit of the doubt and you should always go above and beyond and do everything for people and especially if it's an opportunity to make money, you should just take whatever you can get. The first salon that I worked at after graduating beauty school, my boss there was like that. She had that mentality. Somebody would walk in like 30 minutes before the salon was gonna close wanting a full color service. We were expected to just take them anyway and stay super late doesn't matter if you have if the client wants to come in early that day you should come in early if they want to come in on a day that you have off you should come in on your day off you should do whatever you have to do to take a client to make money and the thing about that is it's just gonna leave you feeling completely burnt out and taken advantage of and you're gonna get really resentful and end up hating your job and honestly I feel like you're gonna end up making less money that way because if you're just letting people walk all over you all the time, you're overworking yourself, you're giving people discounts, you're doing services that you don't really like, that you're not particularly great at just for the sake of doing the service and making the money, like what kind of quality is that? of a career. You want to establish yourself as a professional. You want people to take you seriously and to respect you and to know your worth. You shouldn't allow people to take advantage of you. Yes, this is a service industry, but that doesn't mean that you should be treated like a servant. This is your career. This is a skill that you spent money and put a lot of time into building. Now, I'm not saying that you should act super stuck up and be sitting on this high pedestal or be really cold and robotic. You can still give people 100% and be kind and accommodating without being taken advantage of and feeling like people are walking all over you. And just like that quote said, you know, the people who have a problem with you establishing boundaries are the people that are benefiting from you not having them in the first place. I feel like I have a habit of being a little bit naive and wanting to assume the best in people a lot of the times and so I want to go above and beyond for people and I want to make exceptions for them and I want to you know excuse certain things but the thing is there are people who will take advantage of that they will see that you are someone that doesn't have any boundaries and that doesn't stand up for yourself and they're just gonna take you for everything you've got and they will keep letting you just be a doormat for them to walk all over. Why do you want people like that around you? Why do you want clients like that? There are really great, amazing people out there and great clients that will respect you. I have so many clients that if they ever need to cancel an appointment, even if they give me like well over a week's notice, they still will offer to pay any kind of cancellation fee. And I'm like, no, you're good. Don't worry about it. But those are the kind of clients that make it known that they respect me. They appreciate me. And I know that especially in the very beginning, if you're a new stylist, you're still working on building your clientele, it's hard to have the confidence to establish those boundaries. And you want to say yes to everybody because you don't want to turn people away. Any client is better than no client, but don't let the fear of not having any clientele and not like growing your book fast enough allow people to end up taking advantage of you and force yourself to put up with treatment that you don't deserve. Have respect for yourself as a human being and as a stylist or whatever your profession is. Know your worth, establish your boundaries, and don't budge on them. So I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. I mean, this is a topic that I could go on and on about for hours. <laughs> um, and I just think that it's something that you have to just constantly be working on, especially if you are like me. And I think most people that work 
in the beauty field and in the service industry, like we're just natural people pleasers. We want to make people feel good. We want to make people feel happy. We want people to like us and to have a good experience with us. So it's hard to put your foot down and say no sometimes, but you have to do it sometimes for your own well-being and to stay sane. So that's going to be it for this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Let me know your experiences. Have you had a scenario where you needed to establish boundaries with somebody? Even if you don't work in the cosmetology field, let me know your experiences. And if you like this video and you want to see more videos where I just kind of discuss topics like this, let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to check out the link to Skillshare. Like I said, get yourself a free premium membership for two months. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.